we have a pretty funny video <laughs> about some illegal raves in London. Um, we should play here, I guess. I guess these things have been happening anyway for a while and I've just not been aware of them um, during COVID. I'm sure there have been a whole bevy of festivals and parties happening all over the place that I'm just not aware of because I've just been keeping my head down, um, you know, doing what I can do at home and keeping it nice and safe. But I, I'm not surprised that there are kids out there who are just like, you know what, I'm not. Because I, I think if I was if I was younger, if I was maybe 10 years, five years younger and I was at ho and I was living with my parents and I just, you know, couldn't handle it anymore. I was doing all my lectures on Skype and having to, you know, um, FaceTime my friends every day. I would it'd literally drive me nuts and I would have to go out and, you know, seek some kind of pleasure that didn't um, contain me having to sit, you know, in my room all day on my own that's not the vibe so i think i would have done it too but i think at this age i'm at now being an adult being a grown-up with my own responsibilities i just can't take that risk and it's not something that i'm willing to do i'd much rather go when i feel like things are safe so i can really go and enjoy myself but i understand that they are happening and um no matter how many fines the government puts in place in terms of kind of curtailing these parties and making people not do them and stuff it's not having any effect the kids are still going out and it's making me think I wonder if there's something um, in us innately as humans that just makes us want to gather in place, especially during really bleak times, because it seems like everyone's kind of drawn to these parties like a wasp is to the light, right? They just can't help themselves, right? It's just, a, it's just a magnetic pull that they have. They have to go somewhere to a dark, dingy warehouse space with little to no ventilation surrounded by hot, sweaty people and just dance during you know again um in the midst of a global pandemic they just can't help themselves so i wonder if there's something intrinsically about humans that makes us want to do that during uh, a really difficult time in our lives maybe that's what people do when they grieve i don't know if that's a process because i'm not luckily i've not had somebody very close to me pass away recently but i wonder if that's part of the process of grieving too where you just act out um maybe it happens in breakups as well but it's really strange that during a pandemic there's been a real uptick in illegal events when for the longest time in the uk especially last year or maybe a couple for a couple of years there was a real slowdown in terms of the illegal warehouse parties this team tend to kind of it came to a bit of a grinding hole unfortunately i went to quite a few before that but a lot of them kind of stopped happening and um i guess maybe the appetite went but suddenly now because we're not allowed to go out everyone's sort of turned into a party promoter and i put on events and the bbc kind of covered it in this kind of funny video that i'm going to play a bit for you now but 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 our job was to provide another service to the people that no one else was providing a service to this is an illegal underground covid rave these gatherings are often secretive and selective and they're advertised on social media. The details are discussed on a private WhatsApp group. You have to pay £25 for the secret location. So, that's what we did. We've been waiting. That is a hustle, isn't it? 25 quid to go to a warehouse rave in London that might get locked off in an hour. And if you know anything about warehouse raves in London, they are real luck of the draw. There's a real flip of a coin if you're going to get somewhere where you're partying with a promoter who's actually taking care of the space and you know made all the necessary adjustments to make the sound good you know away from noisy neighbors away from kind of neighbors so you won't get you know um, noise complaints and just generally does a good job and just somebody that decides to just rock up with one of those sort of like active monitor speakers and plug in their phone I've legitimately been to warehouse rooms like that before where I've had to pay someone £10 just to go to a space where somebody just got their phone on Spotify and they're just playing music through that on a speaker and people are doing balloons in the corner and shit. It's an all day for the location. It's finally been released. We've been given the secret location for the event. It's off a road on the M25. This guy could not be a bigger dog if you tried, didn't it? Off the M25. It's like, God almighty. Jesus Christ. Let's go to an illegal COVID rave. This guy is such a dork. Tonight's venue is a truck stop. There's over 60 people here tonight. It's hot and sweaty. <laughs> and there's no social distancing. Trucks and alcohol are also on sale tonight. It's five pounds to buy pints and the same for laughing gas. I speak to one of- You gotta love a good old laughing gas in the UK, innit mate? Bloody hell, what a knees up. Again, 
this doesn't look like fun to me. I understand the need to go out, but this doesn't look like a good night out. You know what I mean? I'd much rather things go back to some kind of level of normality so that I can go out to a proper event with people that actually take care to put on a good party, for lack of a better term. Because this, if ever there was a more, this this couldn't look like a more random set of people, right? There's no, like, there's nothing that ties anyone in this room together apart from the need to get drunk and high. There's nothing at all. Not music, not interest zero like interest of course you know drinking and getting high but apart from that zero that ties them together one of the ravers she's traveled two hours to get here and says she's given up on the government's rules of course she has jesus christ some people aren't here to party but to work <laughs> one dj tells me he's being paid 60 pounds to perform tonight yeah i've been there brother welcome to the club <laughs> <laughs> We just left a very packed venue with more than 60 people, none of whom were observing social distancing. Lots of dancing, sweating, touching. Lots of dancing and sweating. Sorry. We're observing social distancing. Lots of dancing, sweating, touching, drugs. He seems like a good time now, isn't it? He seems like a good night out, right? <coughs> He's the kind of guy that will snitch to your mum about what you're doing. What are you guys up to? Why are you staying so late? Um, sorry, auntie. We were out dancing, sweating, drinking, doing loads of drugs. Like, and alcohol God both being sold by the organisers. It's like a snitch. We're driving to meet the organisers because they've agreed to do an interview. Okay. We've driven around East London to the second location where the organisers said they'd meet us. It's been two hours. We've sent them nine WhatsApp messages asking <laughs> where they are, if they're going to turn up. They us. The next day, we got a call from one of the organisers telling us that the planned interview was actually a setup. He agreed to FaceTime, but wanted to remain anonymous. So I just don't think it's safe for you guys at the moment. There's been a few talks of people getting, like, yeah, approached in, a, in an aggressive manner, should I think. But you guys got to keep yourself safe. The government's guidelines, laws, say mass gatherings like yours aren't allowed. What's your response to that? We've always tried to adhere to them rules and have the PPE that the government has deemed acceptable in order to detect symptoms and that sort of stuff. We had masks for the staff. You actually trusting your health or you're putting your health in the hands of a guy that's in a metallic, faux metallic gold anonymous mask? Is this what you're really doing? Somebody that's telling the film crew that they were in their lives are in danger if they met him in some undisclosed location in East London. Why? Were they going to steal his cameras? Like, absolute wildlands. But not for the party goers. But not for the party goers. Are you proud of what you've done during lockdown? <laughs> I'll be honest with you, yeah. Now that I look back on it, yeah, I'm very proud of myself and my team, yeah, of how he's actually done things. He may be proud, but COVID doesn't care about that. In South Korea, all it took was one man in a nightclub to infect hundreds. The same could happen from these raves. <sighs> what a funny little story, man. The need to rave is strong, isn't it? And again, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's something intrinsic within us that we just can't help when we're going through hard times. We have to gather in place. But that does not look like a fun event, in my opinion. <laughs> 